He was my destiny. I wish to promote you, Mr. Presley. Are you ready to fly? I'm ready. Ready to fly. Tomorrow, all of America will be talking about Elvis Presley. And with us in studio is I24 News host Emily Francis. Emily, you know, this is the first major Hollywood studio release about a movie of Elvis. You know, the king of rock and roll. It took a long time. Interesting choices, right? With the casting, with the director. It's a bold vision a for bold this project. Vision. And, you know, with Buzz Lorman, you know, you know everything is very fantastical. So it's very interesting that, you know, the, the director responsible for Moulin Rouge and Great Gatsby, uh, you know, would take on, you know, such an undertaking of Elvis, who clearly still lives. I mean, he would have been 87 in January, and he's been dead almost 45 years. He's still, all these decades later, you know, is relevant in the ethers. The Boz Luhrmann, you know, this is the Moulin Rouge director. He's, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, so bold, so imaginative, so colorful. I mean, leaves his films always leave an impression. They're not like standard you know, Hollywood biopic tropes. This is going to you know, be a very creative, imaginative fantasy portrayal yeah, here. That a lot of people are talking about. And I think at the end of the day, I mean, I think this goes to show that, you know, Elvis, for for whatever reason, Elvis to this day is still considered the first, you know, rock and roll star. And the fact that he's still influencing, you know, people that were clearly not even alive when he passed away just goes to show that that he's really a, a timeless figure and, and there, he's like a kaleidoscope. There's yeah. so many aspects of his life, even with all, you know, there's a lot of Netflix series and a lot of things, but still there's always a new angle for Elvis that people are interested in. To this day, I mean, he is the king and we're talking about the different angles to his life and legacy. One angle that you have dug into recently is about his interest, lifelong interest in the Jewish faith and that goes back to his Childhood as a as a young boy growing up in, in Tennessee. That's true, and it's funny. A lot of uh, people, again, not aware of it. I interviewed a few months ago a woman uh, named Roselle Chartuck who wrote a book, The Jewish World of Elvis Presley, and she went and she interviewed all of the people in in his in his world and it starts with uh, a rabbi's family who when they first moved from Tupelo to Memphis in a an immigrant neighborhood they lived downstairs from a rabbi fructor and here's what she uh, Roselle has to say about him being uh, in their home on Shabbat what Elvis uh, ended up being was their Shabbos goy we now say Shabbos helper of course but but Elvis turned their lights on and did all kinds of things for them and Jeanette who's the rabbi's wife said um, that Elvis would come and sit with them at Friday dinner. He would, he, he would eat the, the gefilte fish and simis, and he loved to have his peanut butter and banana sandwiches on challah. So he learned about the Jewish religion from this rabbi, and they loved him and he loved them. <laughs> and, Emily, and as you explored, I mean, perhaps Elvis's interest in Jewish food and Jewish Shabbat traditions is because Elvis himself Maybe that, Jewish, that's true. Jewish. As a matter of fact, uh, his he his original maternal great grandmother was a woman named Nancy Burdine from Lithuania, and you know Roselle not only uncovered it, but other authors in the past have uncovered it. And it, it is said that um, she sat him down, you know, when he was young, saying, you know, we have Jewish blood. People don't like Jews. Let's not talk about it with Dad. Let's not talk about it with people. But clearly, he was very much influenced, and even the rabbi. Even into his adult life, he continued to put money into the Rabbi Fruchter's yeshiva. He was also the recipient of a lot of, you know, charitable work. He received shoes from Jewish families. He was uh, given free admission to the JCC. That's where he learned to play racquetball. He even gave money to the JCC. Donated money Memphis. to the Jewish Community Center. Yeah, so he was really giving tzedakah. And, and throughout his life, very interested in, in, in Judaism and Jewish mm -hmm. spiritualism. And you mentioned, you know, the, the anti-Semitism that was impacted his ability to be open about his exploration of Jewishness. Mm -hmm. You know, this film, this new biopic, it kind of takes the angle of focusing Elvis's life through the prism of Colonel Tom Parker, this Correct. enigmatic, controversial, you know, hyper-controlling, but successful manager for mm -hmm. throughout Elvis's career. And Colonel Tom Parker himself had strong views on Jews and Jews' influence. That's right. And even, uh, you know, you know, Colonel Parker 
has you know been uncovered as well to have had anti-Semitic tendencies. I mean, even throughout Elvis's life, half of the Memphis Mafia were Jews. The his eight of his most uh, prominent songwriters were Jews, and also all of the Hollywood, his agent and the the directors and the producers of the films that he did when he was the biggest movie star in Hollywood. Yep. And there's even a quote from Colonel Parker, who was apparently jealous of his friendships with his Hollywood. Losing control to these other agents. Exactly, other and, and he said, "You can't trust people in this town. There are Jews here, and Jews are going to take it." advantage of you. Hmm. It's unclear, you know, if this new film with stars, Tom Hanks, he's the center stage here, if it's going to address that, but certainly a big part of his, his life, That's Colonel right. Tom Parker, these anti-Semitic tendencies. Mm -hmm. Research still ongoing into Elvis, his background, his yep. thoughts, his, his progression as an artist and a human, and you're uncovering, I mean, there's still conversations going on. There are still conversations. I'm actually in constant contact with Roselle and also Larry Geller, who is uh, mentioned as well in the piece. Let's hear a little bit about Larry Geller, and I'll tell you more about him. I'm in touch with him frequently. He's a great guy. Larry Geller became Elvis's hairdresser originally. Larry started giving him books, uh, all kinds of philosophical books, the Kabbalah being one of them. And he sat down with Elvis and he explained so many things to Elvis. Elvis was fascinated by the Kabbalah uh, teachings. And he taught him about the meaning of high, and that's when he started wearing the high symbol. And he taught him about the meaning of his name, Elvis, El, God. I mean, Elvis loved learning. Yeah, and Larry Geller, you know, he's in his early 80s. It turns out I've been speaking to him a lot. He went to high school, actually, the same high school as my parents in L.A. But he, you know, met Elvis. His relationship with Elvis started in the 60s where he was not only his hairdresser, but he was, you know, Larry was digging into spirituality, Buddhism, Judaism. And he met Elvis, and it was like in an instant connection because Elvis started opening up to him. Why me? Elvis had a twin brother named Jesse Garone. Elvis's middle name was Aaron Garone. Mm -hmm. And even at the time, it was Larry Geller that went to the the cemetery of Elvis's mom and Elvis had him put, uh, you know, a Jewish star on her grave, which is now in at Graceland. So there's yeah. a Jewish star on his mother's grave to this day. And Larry Geller was a very prominent, you know, influence in Elvis's spiritual life. It really delving into the deeper side of Elvis, not just this industry that we know Elvis of that was created by Colonel Parker. Yeah, and he's in his 80s now. Crazy to think Elvis could, could very well have been alive today to, to be here with us. Such a Incredible tragic, research tragic you've, you've dug into into Elvis and, and his interest and lifelong uh, curiosity about Judaism and spirituality. Thank you so much, Emily, for Thank being with you. us. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me.